Okay, first time we've done a video, unscripted, unedited, so forget the mistakes, but Australia Day. Yes, it's Australia Day, the day which we all have stories to tell about. Be it Aboriginals who were here before European settlement, or those who came later through different stages of migration to this country. It's a history. And every history has good and bad. We need to accept it. As a part of celebrating this Australia Day, we need to acknowledge the rights of the traditional land owners who were here for over 40,000 years before the European settlement. Australia today is multicultural and colorful country because of this immigration and the history which followed. As an Uzi Muslim, I want to listen from you about your understanding about Islam in Australia. Um, okay, so I've, I've done a lot of reading, researching of the history. Um, I've made a few points here because I can't remember some of the names of some of the people, but I know even before European settlement that uh, you know the Muslim Makassans from Sulawesi, Indonesia, were um, fishing for trepang, doing trading, and uh, and actually marrying some of the Aboriginals in the northern part of uh, of Australia, and um, and this is why today you know some of the Aboriginals have got last names like Muhammad Khan and Sultan. Um, but even but even when the first fleet arrived in 1788, there was 1,487 passengers, uh, people on board, not passengers, but uh, some of those convicts, and and of some of them there were Muslims. Uh, and even if we go one step, you know, uh, you know, just past that to the third fleet that arrived, uh, which I think was uh, yeah 1791, there was an Indian uh, Muslim on there by the name of Zimran Wariam, uh, who was listed as one of the convicts. Uh, and after five years. After that, there was many Muslims that came out here as, uh, you know, they were, they were mixed in between the free settlers, the sailors, and uh, things like this. But many of those that came out in that period were Indian uh, or from Shla uh, Sri Lanka. That's a tongue twister, but Sri Lanka. Um, 1813 was a, another interesting year because I've seen uh, some of the convicts that came out here were from Iraq, Oman, Mauritius, and South Africa. Um, and even a free settler came out uh, by the name of uh, Muhammad Qasim, who he settled in Hobart in 1818, along with Sua Sultan, and she's recorded as having 27, uh, 28 acres of pasture and two acres of wheat. If we go a little bit further forward, uh, a history that you know most Australians are, are well aware of is the Cameliers that came out here in uh, 1960, I think it was, yeah, 1960. Yeah, they came in here the first time uh, to go with the ill-fated Burke and Wills expedition and we all know what happened on that expedition but you know they got the Muslim Cameliers to come out because uh, you know they needed to go to the long distance and um, you know the, the camel the camels are uh, and the Cameliers are well attuned to the harsh environments you know which they tried to explore the center of Australia but um, they passed away over the next 50 years 2,000 Muslim Cameliers uh, you know uh, came out uh, from them, there was the Afghans, the Pakistans, Egyptians, Persians, and Turkey. They all spoke different languages, all from different backgrounds, different culture, uh, ethnicity, um, but they're all united uh, because of Islam. They all came together for that one, you know, one thing. But uh, but other than that, um, you know, they all had their own, you know, food, their own ways, their own things of doing things. And I believe this is what Australia is today is we've got such a multicultural society here now, you know, the fa very fabric of society is we've got, you know, people from all over the world. We come together, we acknowledge that we're Australians in Australia, um, but we have differences. Um, and if we can accept that people have those differences and, and you know, acknowledge them and move on, I, I think this is, you know, um, you know one of the, the, the best things about Australia. Um, with the Cameliers, even if you look in the old journals of the European um, explorers, you know, they comment on the Cameliers about their strict adherence to their religion. Um, you know, that, that, that was, um, you know, and they, they write of their excellent character, their reliability, their stamina and life-saving uh, life skills. And many of the explorers gra uh, gladly in their journals have acknowledged the debt they owe to those camel handlers. Um, 
the Muslim Cameleers were very rarely credited with the, the, you know, the contribution they made to Australia. You know, they used to take all of the supplies, the stores, the water, the food from the shores of Australia to the remote areas of New South Wales and in the middle of Australia for that matter, um, to, to open up the inland of Australia, you know, and, and it's widely acknowledged that, you know, apart from building the, the telegraph, the form of communication between, you know, east to west in, uh, you know, in Australia, um, you know, they they opened up the centre of Australia, they said, and if it wasn't for them, it we'd be behind another 50 years because the horses, the bullocks and these things couldn't do what the camels could do. So the Muslim cameleers, you know, um, opened up the centre of Australia and and, uh, you know, they, they are part of why Australia is here today. We've, we've got to acknowledge that. You know, the same as the Aboriginals were here before European settlement, um, the Muslims were here before European settlement, but during it. And we have, to, we have to acknowledge everyone's got a story of some description to talk about for Australia Day. Um, the GAN train, uh, which still runs from east to west across Australia, is aptly named after, you know, the the Afghans and all of the people that were to do with it. And that's why it's got the picture of the camel on the side and, and the cameleers. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's, you know, there is there is some level of acknowledgement there. The oldest mosque in Australia was built in, uh, let me have a look, 1862 in Mari. And of course we know the oldest city mosque was the Adelaide Mosque uh, built in 1888. So, um, yeah, this, I've done a lot more reading and studying into Islam in Australia, but, um, um, yeah, that's my understanding at the moment in, in, in basic shine. Uh, we have heard about Islam, Australian understanding about that. We, as Muslim, managing the land of Turkish mosque, Muslim Turkish variety, we want to know about you, yourself. Oh, so you want to know about me yes. in Islam? Okay. I was, I was born here in, uh, in Newcastle, True Blue, Nova Castry, in True Blue, Australia. Parents born here, um, great parent, great grandparents born here. Uh, great grandparent was actually buried in Christchurch Cathedral in, in Newcastle. We've got a street named after us in there. And from the, the historians that have studied our family have gone back that we came out here on um, the first fleet apparently as a second officer on a store ship. So, you know, just like Scott Morrison, you know, we have the history dating back to the first fleet coming out here. Um, you know, so it's uh, so. You know, English Scottish background. Um, I feel blessed that um, you know I'm running a, a Turkish-owned mosque here at Mayfield in Newcastle, um, and uh, being a true blue Australian. And but if, if you come to the Friday prayers, the the vast multicultural uh, backgrounds of all of the people in our mosque, I, I just can't even begin to count how many is there. Like all of the Asians, the Chinese, the Indonesians, the Malaysians. Um, you go through to the Arab countries, you know, we've got Saudis there, we've got uh, Egyptians there. Um, and you look at the subcontinental, you know, the Bangladeshis, the Indians, the Pakistanis, um, um, you know, certainly Chinese. We've had the, uh, that lady from America, beautiful lady that she's, you know, she's down, down there. Um, haven't seen her for a while, but, you know, every country in, in the world just about at some point is in the mosque. And it's great to sit beside them and they tell you about their country and we're all happy, we smile, we integrate together and we come together. And I think this is what Australia is all about, uh, is that we've brought so much from around the world, come together and, uh, and that's what, you know, you know, Australia is really about. And if you look at that professor who done that study on uh, countries around the world that are the most resilient in times of hardship, and his conclusion of a long-term study was that those countries that embrace multiculturalism the most are the ones who come out the best in these type of things. They're the ones who actually flourish the best as well. You know, if, if we stay focused in just our country, just our people, it doesn't grow. It doesn't grow in a, in a beautiful, harmonious way. And if you look at the global financial crisis happened uh, when it happened, the number one, uh, when Kevin Rudd was in government, Australia came out as number one in the developed countries in all the world of, you know, the, the one that withstood the global financial crisis the most. And ironically, Indonesia was number one in the developing countries. So I think what that, you know, that, uh, that professor, what he's uh, come out with his study is pretty accurate. And, and if you look in Australia, actually, with the, um, we were number one in Newcastle yeah. um, in Australia when we look at Australia in the global financial crisis, and if, if Australia was number one in the world, you have to actually say, uh, Newcastle was number one in the world 
of resilience against the global financial crisis. And I have to say, I, I you know, of course, lived and worked through it. We didn't miss a beat much here in Newcastle, but just kept going. And it wasn't because of coal. We don't know what it was. The community just kept going. The economy kept going. It was good. Sure, there's some shops that hurt, some other things that hurt. There's no doubt about that. But overall, no one can work out why, but the hunt is strong, even today. Hunter's just booming. And, um, and, and I think this is what we have to do, is embrace multiculturalism, accept that there's some not good things of the past, but there's some good things. We learn from them, and, and then, you know, we go forward. So what's, what's from, the, from the Imam of the Mosque point of view, if a Muslim does migrate to a non-Muslim country or to another country, what does Islam say about this? Well, Islam in, 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 in this regard talks about respecting the law, abide by the laws, cooperate with others to achieve the security and safety and prosperity and welfare of the country, bring your culture here and mix with other cultures to help the, the, the country itself to grow and flourish more and more. Muslims need to do their best and first to feel the, this is their country. They are living here and they found their they find their freedom to worship, to practice, to work, to have everything they have according to their Islamic criteria. So they need to participate. As first Muslim refugees in the Islamic history, when the Prophet sent them to Abyssinia, Al Habasha, and they were a part of the community and they participated a lot to achieve the prosperity of the society there. Irrespective of your culture, respective of your background, we all are from Adam and Eve. So what we shall do, we need to keep going, look forward, cooperate together, enjoy your day, make friends and respect each other and say to others, Happy Australia Day. Happy Australia.